And right as we're pulling out to go to our next spot, this big hydrofoil like people ferry comes scooting across the sea. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Good morning. We took a short 10 minute ride from our beachside camp from last night south right up to the border of Greece where there is a national park. We're about to take you in and there is so much cool history here and so much cool stuff to see. So let's get right to it guys. I'm excited. This has been on my list since I discovered that it was here when we were doing our research of Albania. Yeah. I hope it is as good as I feel like it's going to be. So right here at the entrance to the park, there's two things. And number one, there's a ferry. We got down, this is kind of a dead end road crossing a river that dumps into the sea right here. As you can see, it's just a little four or five car ferry that goes across and down there, it's not far at all to Greece, but this is Ali Pasha's castle. And not long ago, just off the coast, we took you to a real fancy castle of his. Now we're not gonna take the ferry across to go over there, so we're not gonna show you, but this was an important ancient city. The United States. Okay. Thank you. Ooh, this is pretty big. Welcome to the ancient town of Butrint, Butrint National Park here in Albania. And it has had many, many, many rulers in this region going all the way back, some say to six, seven and 800 BC, but documented definitely 100 and 200 BC times. And the really interesting history, which we're gonna tell you about as we walk through here, starts in 60, 50, and 40 BC. So this is over 2,000 years ago that this place was being built and people were living here, but it has been owned by Romans, Venetians, the medieval period. It had many different owners over the years, all the way up until, I don't know, let's see, the 13 or 1400s. But let's get going and learn about the history of this really cool place. And it doesn't take long and all of a sudden we've arrived in what was the city center. And you can see here, right as we approach here, some of the basic walls of some of the structures through here. And you've probably heard me say this before, but I always find it fascinating that you can kind of see the different years of construction and repair by the different types of stones and materials they used. And back over there is the theater. We'll get closer to that. And we're not, not allowed to walk on the walls, but I think there's some areas where we'll get to be able to walk down in and really check this stuff out. So Butrent goes back thousands of years and uh, it's documented history goes back as far as the fourth century BC. So 4,000 BC. And its fame and its popularity has to do a lot with that it had a sanctuary dedicated to Asclepius, who is the Greek god of medicine. Now later we should be able to see some ruins of that. I hope they're over closer to the center of this town area. Right now we're approaching the theater and uh, it's amazing to look at these ruins and know how long some of this stuff has been here. But I want to give you a little brief history that intrigued me a ton and made me put this really high on our list of things that I really wanted us to see when we were in Albania. Now, Caesar, yes, Caesar, everyone's heard of Caesar. Well, there were many, many battles going on in the 50s and 40s BC time over control of the Roman Empire. And there was a civil war between Caesar and Pompey, two very powerful generals. And 
it caused them to leave Italy, which was like the center of the Roman Empire at the time. And, and Pompey fled over here to the Albania, the Adriatic area here, which wasn't called Albania at the time. But Caesar chased him. They went back and forth. Many, many battles happened. And where we were first camping with our friends, David and Diane, at that bay is where Julius Caesar actually sailed in with his soldiers. And then they hiked over the same mountain that Kurt hiked not long ago, supposedly the exact same trail some of Caesar's soldiers took. And then they came in here and up north farther, there were some really big, very important battles of that civil war. But this area in the 40s BC, was declared a place for veterans. So Caesar had conquered the area and he had declared this a city where veterans that were due their retirement could live and would be given land and refuge here and be given thanks for all their service to the war. Uh, it didn't take right away. Um, there was some political stuff going on where Caesar was struggling to have certain control over things. So only a few of the veteran soldiers moved in at the time. But 20 or 30 years later, Augustus, if you're a history person, is another name you've probably heard of, had won some battles in this area and decided to revitalize Caesar's idea of making this a colony for uh, veterans to be rewarded with a homestead. And then that's when the population here really started to boom and they started to build a full on city. So the fact that this place has so much history of someone as famous as Caesar just got me a little bit giddy. So we're walking on steps and sitting in theaters that Caesar sat in. How crazy is that? All right, that's the brief overview of a very complex 20 year civil war for the control of the Roman Empire. But I wanted you to know why this place was important to me. The theater was discovered by an Italian archeologist in the 1920s. Definitely a huge discovery for him. Now there are inscriptions on walls here that go back to the fourth century BC. So they believe that's probably when construction started. And then in 200 AD, which is over 2000 years ago, guys, it was rebuilt and enlarged by the Romans. But I can imagine a lot of theatrical performances happened right here with people sitting there in those stands watching. There was a big expansion of Boutrent in the late first century AD, so the 80s and 90s. And uh, a lot of the buildings in the town center were donated by private donations. Private individuals built them, not the government. An example would be the bathhouse. Now this area is still only partially excavated. They believe there is a lot more to be found underground here. So this is just the tip of the iceberg for these ruins. Here's some paintings up here. See those paintings up there, guys? They're mostly kind of going away. They do have a covering there. They won't make it forever. So I don't know if you can see it, but it looks like these were big stone doors. And you can see where maybe the hinges were hinged right in here. And the door either was a half door or it's kind of worn from the time. But it looks like maybe that's how you get to the aqueduct. Then even I'm not sure exactly what that was, but it looks like pretty much a wall behind it. So I don't imagine it went anywhere. And snow is taking it in. I can tell you she has been absolutely gripped by the history that we've kind of experience through these ruins and through these different spots and locations and castles and forts and well me too so this was the gymnasium and one thing they point out here at this stopping point is that from early times this was just like a you know like a conglomeration of a few things to the greek god of medicine 
but when the Romans came in, they really started to make a design. There was streets, and there was a grid, and there were equal land parts for ownership in here. So it really started to show how the Romans were good at development and having a plan. But this was a gymnasium, and also, unfortunately, we can't see it anymore because the water and the, the soot has come in here, but there were mosaics here. Now they think it was a gymnasium. They're not quite sure what this building was used for. So Albania has done a really nice job with this national park. Really amazing trails, lots of signage showing, you know, where things are and they have the maps in many different languages that you can pick up at the front. But I also want to let you know that this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. I believe it was dedicated in 1992. So Shout out to UNESCO too, because I'm sure they helped finance some of the really cool improvements that Albania has done here. But they've done a nice job with this park. So this is the ruins of a grand palace. Now early on, it started out more as just a villa for probably a definitely a wealthy resident. But in 400 AD, so the, the 400s, it was transformed into a grand palace where somebody very powerful and wealthy probably lived. So let's take a look at this palace or the ruins of it anyway. Now you can see over time, the terrain has changed, caused some flooding through here. I know somewhere in history, there was a huge earthquake that flooded most of the town, but it was rebuilt. But it looks like the environmental effects, they're dealing with flooding again probably because so much excavation had to go on to dig out this stuff. There's Kurt. I see him right through there. Hey, Curdy. <laughs> so it's very faint. But this entire wall used to be inscripted with some sort of Greek or Roman writing, but it is fading. The elements are too much for it over time, but you can still see a little bit of it. This is the ruins of a baptistry. It was very complex. It had a mosaic tile floor. No, they've got it covered up to protect it. And it's believed that even back when it was an act of use, for the most part, the mosaics were protected by being covered with the sand and gravel and only revealed for special baptisms. And every few years they'd be cleaned off and then covered back up. So under here is a cool mosaic tile floor. In the center, you can see probably the baptism area. And they say that this one is as complex and supposedly as beautiful as some of the more famous ones you would see in Italy. I can imagine when it had a roof on it and all these columns were whole, that it was a pretty magnificent thing to see. Now this is a huge sprawling city. I don't know how we'll possibly be able to see it all. Down at the end of this short little trail is what they call the merchant house. So I guess that's where you went to buy, buy things. Kurt's going to go check it out. He's not skipping any of this place. Are you, Curdy? Yeah. And we are approaching some sort of huge structure. Snow says this is the Great Basilica. I think. And uh, it is grand walls. So I would have no doubt generally the biggest buildings in the time are churches. Of course, now they're banks and insurance companies, but we'll leave that conversation for another day. <laughs> so as the Roman Empire started to lose some of its strength and power across the whole region. In the 6th century, they decided they needed to put up some more fortifications, wall this area in a little bit more to protect it. 
because they were losing power and becoming more vulnerable to attacks. So this wall was built along the river and the lake here in the 500s. And a lot of work was done to it in the 13 and 1400s by the Venetians to make it even more strong and capable of holding off attacks. So this is the great basilica. It was built at the same time as the baptistry we just showed you. It had a bishop that lived here. It was built in the 6th century AD, so in the 500s. Now originally it had a beautiful mosaic tile floor. Of course that has not made it through the test of time. But there are eight other churches that have been found so far in this town of Boutrent. But this was definitely the Grand Basilica. Now this was the monument to the nymphs. And this would go back to Greek mythology times, if I'm remembering right. I remember the little bit of research I did beforehand because they don't have a sign telling us much about this. But if you see on that placard right there, it's the definitely the nymph thing. And I know they had that here. Now nymphs were immortals. They were usually maidens or women. And uh, they usually were tied to a location and usually something to do with the environment. So this was a monument to the nymphs from way, way early times. Wish I knew a little bit more about it, guys. And so basically this whole city was walled and so as we kind of walk around the trail and we get close to the the water here the river and the water you can just see the remnants of the old walls but i gotta tell you walking through the nature i can't remember a set of ruins like this since maybe we were in tikal walking around in the jungles now there was monkeys and foxes and all kinds of exotic birds and all kinds of stuff there but still, I love being in the wilderness and being able to imagine all that went on in this ancient city. And it's a big, a big area for a big organized city as well. Just really a cool way to spend the day. So we're walking along the outside of the outer wall of the city. And every once in a while, you'll come up on a gate and they call this the lake gate. Oh, this is how you get in. So there's a bunch of steps up there. Wow. It definitely was not an easy entrance. You going up? Look how big that wall is. It's crazy, isn't it? You can't go up any more than this right here. Because it just is the... All right, so Kurt walked a little bit in. It's as far as you can go. But he says this was not easy access. And look at how fortified this city was. Look at how thick this wall is, guys. But right there, he says there's a network of stairs that would take you up into the city. Look at the different size rocks. This wall is impressive, guys. Back from the opening we just walked into back there, we know how thick it is, but it is tall and intimidating if you were gonna try to get in. So the Lion's Gate gets its name from this relief carving here, which is a lion eating the head of a bull. Now this was not part of the original gate. This area here was added in the 6th century AD to make the opening smaller and easier to defend. So you can see behind it the original gate size was much bigger and now you can see you have to kneel down to get in there. Now when you come in here there used to be a spring the fresh water which is why they had the nymph monument here some writing whether it be greek or another language 
Ionia, Poyo. And if you look down there, maybe some kind of well, or I don't know, maybe even some kind of spiritual place. So that was a spring. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. That's what I thought it was. Which is why they had the monument to the nymphs here, thanking them for the fresh water. So we entered the Lion's Gate. We are back inside the fortified walls. We have three more structures to see. I gotta tell you, this place was a little bit bigger than I expected. And they still say there's so much left to excavate. But pretty fascinating stuff around the corner, I believe. And then it'll be time to get on the road soon, huh, Kurt? Yeah, it's about winding down. What a nice morning, though. All right. Had a little bit of a hill here at the end, but we're almost to the top. And we're walking along the top of some beautiful cherry trees. Let me spin the camera around so you guys can see them. Look at those beautiful trees. And here we go, we've made it back up to the ruins. All right, we are at the castle entrance and it looks like the castle doors are closed. So I'm not sure we're gonna be able to get in there. There's definitely a museum up here, but I can tell by looking at it that the castle is pretty well preserved and or been remodeled, but look at this fancy thing. Gorgeous. So the castle is up here, kind of on the top of the, the hill of this island and the mountain of this island. And it has a stunning view out over the farmland. You can see some horses down there, some cows. You can certainly see the river. You can kind of see the mountains off in the background. And I should mention this river dumps into the Adriatic Sea and uh, into what is a probably some of the most stunning waters here in Albania. And as we walk through this castle, all of a sudden, that view I was talking about just revealed itself. Holy cow. You can see down through the trees, the mouth of the river and into the sea. Absolutely gorgeous place to have a castle. This was a fancy castle. <laughs> if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.